Hello everybody, it's me, Paul, with Reporting Live from my sofa. This is my visor. I'm going to close it. As you can see, we've gone rogue today. We've gone off the sofa. We've gone off track. I have visitors in town. Now, they're not staying with us, obviously. If you follow me, you know we're doing the tiny house camper living thing right now. Uh, but my mom is, and stepdad are staying at another site. Everybody's up. Bacon's cooking. And Matt's home today. And so I was like, I'm not going to even try and film around here. So I'm in the parking lot of a ribeye steaks. Anyways, this is one reason too I'm going to film at this way today is because yesterday's testimony, I only have two pages of notes. You know, I usually have like 10 to 15 pages of notes. And so I went through and I was just like, you know what, this is going to be easy. So, without further ado, let's review. Now, okay, let's just go ahead and say the key points of yesterday were establishing the layouts of the apartments, the layouts of the complex, similarities, differences, bullet trajectories, this type stuff. So we start the day off with Car, Car, who was on there from the day before. And she's basically up there, you know, she documented the crime scene, that was her job, she's a crime scene analyst. Uh, you know, they did, one more piece of her testimony, I'm just gonna say real shortly on her, is that yeah, the casings could have been moved by accident. She wasn't up there, it just wasn't a big deal. We mostly covered her stuff the day before, so we're just gonna kinda skip on over. Now the next person up there is Officer Nijun. I might not be pronouncing that correctly. Um, and basically we're looking at his body cam footage. We're seeing a different perspective. It's heart-wrenching. It's sad. You know, we see people holding up, um, Botham's legs to like help with circulation. And it's just, you know, it's an awful scene to see that. I, I hope his parents and family weren't in there and saw that, but I think they were. Um, because I mean, again, I'm not even related to the guy and it breaks my heart. I can't imagine if that was somebody that I knew. I mean, it just would, oh my God. So, but that's what he's up there for. Now, another big thing with him, and we see this throughout the day, is they're like, did you move this? Did you move that? Did you move this? Because one thing that is going on is like trying to decide what took place. And they're making sure that they know, no, this person moved the ottoman over here. And this person moved this over here. And da, 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 da. Because a huge key point is a couple of things. Deciding what actions were done. Like when, you know, she opened the door and he stood up or whatever happened. But also what items were visually there to make things look different. The next person we see is Officer Clearly, and they're showing pictures of the parking garage. He describes it. Now, he basically shows us these differences that he made when walking to Amber's apartment through a series of photos. So it's like, you know, almost like frame by frame of this is where we go, and this is what this looks like, and this is what it looks like on this floor, and da 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 da. Now, again, a huge thing in here is the red floor mat and how she you knows so on his stuff it's she didn't have one but all throughout this trial that is a big ordeal is the fact of well he had this red floor mat she didn't you know because if you think about it most people look down at their keys like oh let me get this out and it's almost like again it's just one of those things I think that there's so many other differences that the red floor mat is an obvious glaring one, but the amount of weight they're putting on it at this point is just like, well, my God, I mean, there's 10,000 other things that she did not do or recognize that have just as much importance before that moment. But again, it's just, it's very important. Now, with him, they also go through and they do like a walking, we see Amber's apartment. Now, like I said in the video before, you know, do I think she was some neat freak like everyone said? No. Was she a little bit messy? Yeah. Uh, was her apartment, the layout is the same. So, I mean, that part is the same to me. Once you get in there, it's like, okay, yeah, there's obviously different stuff. So there's like something when you open the door on the wall, that should have been a dead ringer. There's something in eyesight, and that's essentially what they're doing with this stuff, is they're just like, okay, so we don't see an ottoman here, right? No. Uh, okay, well, she has a little half circle table. She has like a little book stand. Her apartment was sm more sparse. Um, it had, again, I describe Botham's apartment as a bachelor pad, and that's not an insult. It's just what, I mean, especially since I'm a guy, like, I get it. It's like, okay, he has video games. He has, you know, he's eating ice cream for dinner or, or dessert or whatever. You know, it's just, I mean, there's, it, it is what it is. Her apartment had more of a, I don't know how to even say it, like a feminine touch to a decorative stuff or whatever. Um... So there was definitely things where it's like, it, it was more open feeling to me. So when I looked at it, the biggest difference was, well, number one, yeah, there's something right there on the wall when you open it. So uh, 
if she opened the door, and again, at, at this point, she must just be so distracted, she has zoned out from the time she entered this complex until the killing. Because it's just, everything is there, she's just not paying attention. So when she opened the apartment, it's like, well, yeah, there's all these things in your apartment. Let's not even get into the sense of smell and stuff like that. You know, it's like, well, here's this keyring thing. Here's this, you know, there's no ottoman there. There's no this, there's no that. You know, it's just all this stuff. And even though it's dark, there's still going to be a light because he has so many light sources pointing towards him. So, you know, it's just... That part of it just frustrates me because, again, it's just more evidence of, like, she just was zoned out to that degree. So now another Texas Ranger gets up there, Michael Stoner, and his only role was to do video walkthroughs. And it was boring, I'm not going to lie. And basically he's just doing, like, a walkthrough of, like, you know, parking and down the hallways to show us these differences of, well, here's this and here's that and here's a placard and here's not a placard and this would be your view from this point and so on and so forth to try and get this. And nobody is debating it at this point. Well, I shouldn't say that because that's a huge point of contention with both the defense and the state. The state is saying, oh my God, look at all these differences. And the defense is saying, oh my God, look at all these similarities. Now, if it comes down to her getting off on this, okay, yeah. But for me, my personal opinion is I'm just like, there's enough similarities that, yes, it's clear. Not just her. I mean, there's lots of evidence that these places are similar. Nobody's doubting that. And again, for me, it just comes down to we're not so much of how similar it was. We can see, in a sense, how this happened. I think most level-headed people would say, my God, you didn't. How did you get past all of this stuff, you know, to get to this point? It, I think most of us can kind of agree with that. But again, a lot of my contention comes from the reaction after this took place of opening that door and what took place. That's where my contention is with it. So, you know, because they can go back and forth all day long about this, that, the other. If somebody's in a zone, you're in a zone. I mean, you know how it is like if you're doing something and you're thinking and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, wait, I missed my turn or whatever. This was like that on steroids, in my opinion. Now, the next person up there is Ranger Adcock. And his testimony was pretty interesting because just from a science -y kind of point of view, he used an instrument called a Leica to do a Leica scan on the apartment. And it basically did like a 3D scan of the apartment and recreated like a visual for us to see the trajectory of the bullet. And so that was pretty interesting. And that's that's what his testimony is. And it was the bullet that hit the south wall. And so we see from that the cone and it goes, you know, from the, the bullet, because remember it's kind of in the back up, uh, the towards the top or whatever, to the um towards the front door. And so that whole line. So they get very technical in his testimony with, well, how tall was Amber? And this is the difference from the top of her head to her eyesight. Because they're trying to recreate what her line of vision was and what the line, the, the way it was where she shot, basically. After, after that Texas Ranger, we have a lady get up there. Her last name's Kendrick. And she is, works, and she's a forensic scientist. Uh, she works with Swifts. And she is basically up there. She is like a, uh, works with fired ammunition to make matches. She works with clothing to identify gunshot residue. She does stuff like this. So she actually gets up there and gets very technical about this. Is, she has like a cool little sample of it. She's like, th she's like, this is a bullet. And, you know, this is this and this is that. And it's interesting to learn, okay, this is what happens when you pull the trigger of a gun and it fires. Now, of course, they're up there and they're like, you know, they give her all the evidence like, what's this? It's the casing that came from the gun. What's this? It's the bullet. You know, they couldn't identify the exact bullet because they're basically up there trying to say, yeah, these bullets came from her gun. This is what happened. These are the kind of bullets it was. So on and so forth. That's the main point of her testimony. Now, the last person we're going to go over for today is Michael Bryce. He's a criminal investigator for the DA, and he basically had to go back and get a search warrant to go get the red floor mat because nobody got it and seized it. So that was basically what he did. So he's, again, testifying to this red floor mat. So he's up there. He's really not up there that long. And now, I, one thing I'm leaving out, they've taken breaks throughout the day. You know, th th this kind of stuff. This is this trial is very tedious, y'all. I'm not going to lie. So after all that, the state rested. I mean, we were like, hallelujah. Now, they go through the same stuff that they do all the time of, we want a not guilty verdict because of this, that, and the other, and da-da-da-da-da. And then the state's like, well, we feel like we proved it because of da-da-da-da-da. And the judge, you know, said, agreed, and she did not give them, you know, a direct guilty or a direct verdict of not guilty uh, and whatnot. So they broke for the day, which is very early. 
And honestly, we all didn't really know what to do. <laughs> I was busy doing stuff, actually, getting ready for my mom coming into town. Uh, but they are going to start with the defense today. Now, everyone, of course, they've been seeing Amber's going to get on this on the, I was going to say the stage, up on the stand. And this is going to be huge because I want to hear from her. Very rarely do we hear from the defendant. So when they do decide to get up there and speak, it's either going to be good or not good or all the above. So for her, I think the world is wanting to see... Hey, I want to see some, I mean, honestly, an apology. You know, I mean, let's start with that, you know. Uh, I want to see an apology. I want to see, and I don't even want to sit here and say, well, I want to see some emotion. Of course I do, but I don't want something fake. I want to see how she genuinely feels because what I saw her genuinely feel was, you know, not very, very callous, to be quite honest, and very self-centered. And so I wanted to see, okay, it's been a year. Where are we at? What do you, you know, where are you at? Now, a lot of times we know attorneys will say, you can't apologize. You can't do this because that assumes guilt. So, I mean, there's that. But I just want to see what she has to say about it. Yeah, you know, I already can almost tell you what she's going to sit here and say about getting, you know, the accident or whatever. Um, and and, I've, and that sounds biased, and I shouldn't say that, but, I mean, I feel like they've explained that so much that it's almost, you know, six, one, half dozen, the other at this point. You know, I think we would have wanted to hear, well, what, you know, what were you thinking, number one? Are you sorry? And, you know, can we try and gauge true sorrow from you, or is this, you know, crocodile tears? And just hear from her perspective of, like, you know, look, Tell us your side and how you feel in the whole nine yards. So we're all very eager here at the Sofa Squad to hear what she has to say. Um, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. And now they are, I forgot to tell you, they are testifying on Saturday. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So I'm just like, oh my God, y'all, this trial. I, I mean, I'm very curious in an ending to this trial uh, just because I want to see justice. And, you know... Other trials, this has just been, again, a very science-y technical trial, and it's been interesting in that way, but it's just been like, you know, to sit here and watch it like, you know, this, and like, try and pay really close attention, and the whole nine yards, it's been very, you know, it's been, it's been taxing on the old noggin up here, um, but I've learned a lot from it, and I just want to see his family, you can never move on from something like this at all, but I want to see them be able to say, we can start the process of healing. Because this is very much an open wound for them and will be forever. So, you know, it's just, ugh, it's awful. So I'm going to run. I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. Thank you, Sofa Squad. Thank you to all the new members for joining. Um, be sure to check out the podcast. Go down to this little link right here. There's lots of stuff there. And uh, that's it. I will talk to you all soon.